yes, today we're going to be talking about um, vigils. Um, and I'm, I live in Loughborough and we have a, a vigil there every week outside our MP's office, which we've been doing for, I think, about nine months now. Um, so Liv is here as well and, and she's going to um, talk about, about the vigil and how it got going. Um, and we've also got Helena, who's, who's part of the vigil each week as well. So Liv, are you happy for me to hand over to you? Yeah, of course. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, hello, um, Caroline said my name is Liv and I live in Loughborough and I'm part of the CCA group um, that's kind of been, I think we got going and formed during lockdown, actually, um, the kind of the first one. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Caroline asked me if I would share a bit about our vigil, kind of what we do, why we do it and kind of our experiences so far. So it's great that she's here and Helena's here as well, so they can chip in if they've got anything extra to add. Um, if I miss anything, so just because as Caroline said, it's been nine months, so I'm a bit like trying to, <laughs> I guess I like, was trying to think back about what we've been doing. So um, so I guess to start with, where, where did it all start? Um, uh, when we were kind of meeting together as a group and talking about what we could like what we could do maybe obviously we all sort of established that uh, we wanted to do more than just kind of sit and care about it ourselves or together but we wanted to go and do something and uh, many of us had um, already written to our local MP Jane Hunt kind of expressing our concern about different things about wanting her support with the CEE bill um, um, and all that different stuff. And, and I'd, I'd written to her a few times and, you know, she'd, she'd given me responses, but they were the very kind of generic Tory party kind of, um, uh, you know, template answers um, that I guess, you know, it was nice to get a response, but I wasn't happy I didn't think the responses were adequate. So, um, um, so in the in the kind of same vein and being inspired by uh, Greta Thunberg and her kind of um, her sort of protest that she does, and the sort of persist the persistence of it, I guess um, we um, we I, I suggested that maybe we did something inspired by like what she does and go and stand outside our MP's office um, every week until, I don't know, like, I don't really know what until at, at, at the start, really, I think we kind of thought maybe she might come and talk to us, maybe we might be able to kind of, uh, pers I don't know, chat with her and persuade her to think otherwise, or maybe this is about um, sharing our concern with the town of Loughborough, um, I think we all we all sort of quite quickly discovered that um, there was lots of things happening in Loughborough that like we didn't know about that were affecting the climate. So, for example, um, there, there's a really massive new incinerator being built on the outskirts of Loughborough. And um, I had absolutely no idea that this was happening. And, and I think a lot of other people didn't either and I think there had been some like local campaigns about it but I hadn't heard about them and and I was and I was just struck by, by the fact well if you know I've been living in Loughborough maybe just nearly 10 over 10 years now if I didn't know about it then I can guarantee that probably no one else knew about the damaging effects of incinerators and and how that would be detrimental to local people's health and things like that so we were like well maybe we can stand there and and, and raise raise awareness about it and kind of um, just be there. So where so where we stand is um, <clears throat> kind of next to the courthouse, and then there's Jane Hunt's office, and then there's quite a busy um, kind of dual carriageway that kind of comes past us. That's got buses and school traffic and work traffic, and there's a there's like a Pelican crossing as well. Um, so there's so there's sort of like there is a kind of fairly consistent flow of traffic that comes around there, and we stand there from eight a.m. until nine thirty a.m. every Friday morning, and <clears throat> and we started off by 
um, having some, like we made some cardboard signs um, and the, the signs just said different things on them about our concern about the climate emergency um, different, they, they started off by saying like different facts about, about what was going on um, and they also you know said like for, for more emotive things about we're here because of our children's futures and um, you know about we you know we need to protect our ecosystem like all those kind of things and they're white signs with black lettering and so I guess there was probably like at the start there's probably about four of us doing that um, and then so as time progressed um, and as we got a bit more kind of recognised of that we were kind of going to be there every week and we, we weren't going anywhere, um, we've slowly been joined by, by more and more people and like more different people. And those, you know, people are, I guess, people who've already got a kind of knowledge and vested interest in, in kind of um, standing up for the climate emergency. So that's people from a local XR group. We were joined by... Um, uh, some representatives from the local Quakers group. Uh, we've had people from the Green Party come along, uh, local councillors, and then sometimes we get like whole families come along, like so whether that's like with children or, um, you know, kind of all sorts of different people. And some people come during school holidays and some people can come before work and they just come for a bit or like, um, all that um, really so that's so that's been encouraging and then on, on the MP front with Jane Hunt um, I think on our first day there if I remember right she came she walked across the road and saw us there and I think it was her birthday <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, so she did well to kind of like you know pretend that she was happy to see us maybe but um um she yeah she she spoke to us and asked us why we were there we talked with her and 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 it sort of continued along that sort of vein for the nine months I would say there's sort of like every not every week but every now and again Jane will come out and speak with us um and listen to us about what we've got to say and you know this is I guess this is positive because she engages with us and basically she talks about us that we that she like likes us so like that we're like nice protesters as she puts it and um, so she like um so she brings us out like cups of tea every week which I'm 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 sure is like um I guess my cynicism goes towards thinking well that looks good for her so um but I, we're also like, well, we're not going anywhere, so we're going to keep going back. And um, so we've had, a, I think we've had like various different conversations with her. Some we've come away feeling really like deflated and being like, what is the point? Um, does she even care? And because of, we also discovered that her political position in the Conservative Party is that she's a private parliamentary secretary. Um, which means that she um, she has a kind of like higher position within the party, which means she has a closer uh, she has a more more of the ear of the cabinet basically. So she's not a backbench MP, but what that means is that she won't like she can't ever tell us her view on anything particularly. So because so she has to toe the party line basically. So. So any criticism we are giving towards the current um, government, she will kind of defend and has been voting in favour of like, you know, the, the recent anti-protest bill and, and like, you know, all those kind of things as well. So, so sometimes you're a bit like, well, we, we have no idea whether any of what we're saying is going in or making a difference because she can't tell us anyway. Um, which is really sad and sometimes I feel it's kind of pointless but um, um, but having said that she's told us her kind of main like th 
three objectives for the year, which two of those things are housing and employment. So we really honed in on our conversations with her around them. And having Caroline there is great because Caroline's a super expert on these kind of things. And um, we've had some, like even just yesterday, we had a conversation with her. Well, Caroline had a great conversation with her about solar panels. And she, you know, you can see that she's, Jane Hunt is quite like invested in and kind of wanting to know more about that and wanting to listen about that. She also recently attended, um, off the back of Caroline and us inviting her, the, the carbon literacy course that Caroline runs. Um, and that was three, like three Wednesday evenings and she came to all of them. And, you know, we were kind of in, pretty encouraged by that because we were saying, well, if she doesn't, we might step it up a gear with something else. Um, uh, but but she did. She came and she said that she enjoyed it and she learned a lot. Um, so that was you know that was positive as well. Um, so um, as a as a group as well, we've we've uh, been in the local paper a couple of times uh, through press releases that we've put together, and a few of us have been on BBC Radio Leicester a few times to talk about the vigil. Um, uh, I've only been on it once and mine was fine, but Caroline seems to get interrogated a little bit. So, um, but there's, <laughs> there's pretty well to, to kind of deal with that. Um, we've also kind of um, adapted and changed our signs as weeks have gone by as well, um, or we've joined in with like national campaigns. So there was like the big green week. So we had some green signs and we wore, we all wore green or there was the uh, Canary, uh, the Craftivism week where we all wore yellow and we had some yellow signs. Uh, we did the uh, CE bill, um, there was the tea, tea party kind of thing. So we actually did it, we set up some tables and had a tea party outside her office and we invited her and she did come and sit and have a cup of tea with us. Um, uh, yeah, so we've, we've done that. Um, I would say I would say more recently speaking personally for myself I've definitely felt quite a big dip in motivation with doing with doing it because yeah it's actually quite difficult to get up uh, for 8 a.m every Friday morning and go out in the freezing cold and stand there <laughs> and get really cold <laughs> for about an hour and a half which we did this Friday um, and um, I think I think I can sometimes feel quite discouraged because I think um, I think what will make a big impact with our vigil is numbers and we just struggle to get more people to come and stand out with us um, I know there's practical reasons why people can't do that because of you know maybe their job wouldn't allow it or having child, you know children and childcare responsibilities um, However, I, you know, I do think, you know, it takes some level of sacrifice to kind of, you know, and I'm talking to, pre preaching to a room of people who know that very well, um, to, to kind of put yourself out, um, to go and, to go and do something. Um, and it's been particularly hard to get any other people from churches to come out and any other Christians to come out and, and, and join us as well, which, um, again, it's just really disappointing, I guess. Um, and um, we obviously were joined by a lot more people when the weather was nicer and warm. Um, and now as the longer we've been doing it and the colder it's got, we, we're back down to kind of smaller numbers again. Um, but we have formed a kind of faithful group that come every single week. Um, which is, uh, you know, the, the three of us look for people here today. Um, my husband comes and um, we've got one guy from Quakers that come and there's a couple from the, like one of the kind of villages um, who, one of them is a great artist and she brings along these massive willow sculptures that she makes. So like sometimes we're joined by a massive willow um, fish full of plastic or a big, uh, I think it, Everyone calls it a dodo, but I don't think it is. It might be. It's not a dodo. It may be, maybe it's an ostrich or something, um, but it's like a big bird, basically. Um, 
that um that that comes out um and she they bring those every week as well which is really cool um so make quite a visual statement even with a few of us um and yeah i think the future for our vigil is i don't i think we've had times where we've been like should we continue this or should we move it somewhere else like should we go and stand outside the child borough council houses or in the town centre perhaps um but the kind of consensus from our group that we've kind of built is is to keep going and that the consistency is important and um just kind of the the being there all the time and people know that we're going to be there is important so we've done things like well we've just changed up our signs again recently um for what they say um but um yeah i don't i don't think there are any plans we don't as a group we don't have any plans to stop as yet um so yeah i think i've i've got to the end of my notes caroline hello so if there's anything else you want to add <laughs> in. hi liv that's fantastic thank <clears throat> you yeah that that's really good to, i think to hear it from your point of view because it was your idea um and i can remember your frustration um in zoom meetings in lockdown at the responses that you were getting from the letters that you sent to Jane so that yeah thank you well, what I've really got um to add is um just I've, I've made a little powerpoint of just some pictures because it is quite a visual thing um, and Liv's lives quite artistic so she came up with the idea for the way in which we do the banners um and I there were notes on the slides but most of them are things lives covered so I'll probably just kind of speed through some bits but I'll share my screen there we go that should great yeah, so, so this is the vigil. This is probably one of the biggest ones we did in that we spread out onto the, we normally stand outside her office where it says Jane Hunt MP in big blue letters, but we spread out onto the, the other side of the road. So the building on the left is our local courthouse. Um, yeah, and we actually put a message out on Facebook one day saying we were going to do that the following week because I felt like no more people were coming because it looked full <laughs> in the pictures. So we took a picture of the empty space in front of the courthouse and said there's still a space and the next week more people came. So that was good. Um, yeah, and it, it's on a, it, it faces a really busy road, which is really busy during the time we're there because it's fresh hour. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as Liv said, it, we, we by holding it, it made it harder to be ignored because our letters were a bit ignored or, or given standard responses. But we've also like found other like-minded people and, and built a bit of a relationship with our MP and, and made the issue quite quite visible. I think to me, it's also important that we end every vigil with about five minutes of, of sort of um, prayer or silence or, or meditation, so different people bring things. Okay. Um, just in terms of, of like what we've achieved, um, we've obviously built up a bit of a relationship with Jane, that's Jane, um, standing in front of our war memorial. Um, so, and, and she's engaged with that, that seven hour carbon literacy course, which I never expected her to say yes, um, or, or to then actually attend all three sessions. So that, that I, we're not sure to what extent, because she doesn't tell you to tend to tell you much about her real opinions, but, but that did feel quite good that an MP who has to obviously think about every issue under the sun devoted that much time um, to what we were asking her to think about. And um, we also, I think to begin with, it was very much CCA Loughborough were doing this vigil, but then because lots of other people got involved, we now refer to it as the, the Loughborough Climate Vigil, because so there are people from XR Leicester involved, and, and as Liv said, this, um, the Quakers came and joined in. There's, there's people from about five different churches so although we've struggled to get um people from churches to come along we do represent just you know just between the small group of us quite a lot of different churches um and, and just people who come along who've yeah who've just individual members of the public who found out about it and um, that's some of our media coverage just in our local paper and we also get lots of honks from car drivers passing by and also bus drivers which for some reason bus drivers are very supportive and um, maybe they want people using public transport Okay. And then this, these are just a few photos. So these ones are really nice because at one week, someone from our church came along just to get some sort of more professional looking photos. So we have um, dogs, we have bicycles and we have children. So it's always good to have those things that are protest. And these are some of um, Nita's um, like artwork. So as you said, there's the dog stomach with rubbish that she's picked out of the canal. Okay, that's our tea party up on the left. 
um, for the C to ask her to support the CEBA, which she's still never done, but there you go. And some of our signs. So the signs are all quite like homemade in, in some respects, but um, but I think quite striking. And we have little sessions where we get together, maybe of an evening and, and paint some more of them. Um, and as Liv said, we're out in all weathers. So we were out a lot in the summer. That was the first photo I showed you at the start. But here on the left, that is a week when it just rained and rained and rained. And on the right, that's just before Christmas. So it's like, you know, almost the shortest day of the year. So you can see the sun coming up behind us and someone's got a Christmas hat on. So that I think there is something quite important about that consistency that we're there week in, week out. Okay. And I, I was just thinking as I was prepping this yesterday, like what is a vigil? So I can remember having a conversation with a lady I've been left with who I've known for years, who's a Quaker, and she was the first Quaker to come and join us. Um, because she already knows me. And, and, I, and in the conversation, it became apparent maybe we had different ideas. Like to me, it was you know, like a form of protest and standing outside and having these banners. And to her, it was definitely about being silent, um, which I hadn't really considered. Um, so we did then incorporate more silence into our sort of times of prayer at the end. Uh, so I just looked it up in the, the dictionary and that's what you get there, a period of keeping awake during a time usually spent asleep. So we're not doing it at night, but as Liv said, for some people, it does involve getting up earlier and, and for some people it's not that they're giving up sleep but they may be giving up work time or a bit of the day that they would have done something else with so it is that kind of intentional decision to to give time to, to being there um and i also found another definition which suggests it is about it can be about protesting an injustice yeah or something that needs to change so that's another definition of a vigil um so we're going to do breakout rooms and I've got some some questions you might want to consider, although feel, feel free to talk about other questions if you want to. So I've got if you ran a vigil, what would you want it to achieve and um, who would you want to invite to be involved and um, who would you want to see it? Who would you want to see it? So we've made sure it's on a busy road, but also right outside our MP's office. And I know some of you have said things like your MP's based in um i don't know an industrial estate or somewhere way out where no one would see so might you go somewhere else would you have a different location and um, so we've also at the minute are considering if we might hold die-ins um in our sort of pedestrianized town center and i don't know if we will yet but we're going to come and listen to to val talk next week yeah so can you think of a suitable location where it's visible to the people you're targeting you've got another question i haven't posed there but is yeah do you think a, a vigil would be effective would it achieve what you, what you want it to achieve if you did one locally or would, or would you do something different 